In today's recap, we bring you a movie called, Notes on a Scandal. In this story, an experienced older teacher is deeply drawn to a younger teacher's charisma, and the two become friends. But things get complicated when the young teacher starts an affair with a student. When the movie begins, Barbara Covet is sitting on an outdoor park bench staring into space. She writes something in her diary, then she makes her way to school early in the morning where she sits on her bench and watches little children walking into the school building to start the new term. As the day progresses, Barbara makes her way through the noise in the school courtyard to get to the class. Later in the afternoon, Barbara attends a meeting along with other teachers in the school, where the principal collects each teacher's reports. Just then, the new art teacher, Sheba, arrives and the principal acknowledges and introduces her to the other teachers in the room. It is Barbara's turn to submit her report which she does, however, the principal isn't really impressed as she hands in a very honest report about the examination scores of the kids in the school, but Barbara remains unaffected by the reaction of the principal. Later on, Barbara watches Sheba scold some children outside. After observing the way Sheba handled the children, Barbara is under the impression that Sheba is a very good person. After a couple of scenes have passed, Barbara narrates how everyone liked flocking around the new art teacher. Brian, another one of the teachers, walks into a teacher's only lounge, where he complains about the disobedient behavior of the children. One teacher teases that Sheba might become the next principal. Barbara notices a fight and sees that Sheba is trying to stop the fight. Barbara intervenes and stops the fight, shortly after she scolds the culprits, Davis and Stephen, and finally settles things. After the boys leave, Barbara and Sheba start talking and introduce themselves. Later on, Barbara looks at Sheba in awe, noticing how pure she is. The two of them have lunch together and discuss various topics. Afterwards, they go to a coffee shop, where another teacher named Sue, reveals that she is pregnant, and Sheba congratulates her. After their coffee date, Sheba extends a lunch invitation to Barbara at her place on Sunday, and Barbara accepts it happily. When Barbara arrives at Sheba's home on Sunday, Sheba's husband Richard, greets her at the door. After Barbara has made herself comfortable on the couch, Polly, the couple's daughter comes over and they have a short conversation. A while later, their son runs into the living room. Everyone has a good time during lunch, and afterwards, the family dances to some country music. Richard persuades Barbara to join them as well and she ends up dancing and having a good time. Afterwards, Sheba takes Barbara to an old home that she has been calling her former studio. While they are talking about some of their previous experiences, Barbara looks through the photographs. Sheba is comforted when Barbara expresses concern about her being both a hardworking teacher and a wife. As their talk progresses, Barbara opens up about many things with Sheba, who is relieved to have finally made a good friend. The next day, Sheba and Barbara are sitting next to each other in a teacher's conference, during which Barbara discusses how successful the two of them would be as friends. While a group of students are performing a song in the auditorium, Barbara becomes concerned about Sheba's whereabouts and leaves the auditorium to investigate. When she arrives at a quiet area of the school, she finds a woman and a student making out passionately. It turns out that the woman is Sheba, and the student is Stephen Connolly. If you made it this far and you're enjoying the video, now would be a great time to subscribe to this channel, subscribing is absolutely free and it would only take a second, it will help us bring you more awesome videos. Back to the recap, Barbara returns home perplexed, after having seen Sheba with a student. Barbara calls her the next day and invites her to her home. Sheba and Barbara sit outside and Sheba narrates the events which led to her encounter with Stephen. Sheba explains that the boy did a drawing of her and presented it to her, upon noticing his talent for art, she had requested the headmaster to give Stephen some space and time to develop his art skills. After a few days of teaching Stephen, one day, Sheba makes the mistake of caressing his hair during their private lessons. Then Stephen gets attracted to his art teacher, and he pursues her until she gives in to his charm. Barbara chastises her new friend about the absurdity of the matter seeing that Stephen is just 15 years old. Sheba says that she just couldn't resist the boy's charm. She also says that they had their first romantic moment at a train yard, which ended up with them having sex. Barbara is shocked to hear about this and ultimately decides to cut ties with Sheba, but she has a change of heart when Sheba confesses that despite her apparently charmed life, she feels unfulfilled. She has a difficult relationship with her rebellious daughter Polly. Sheba's husband Richard, is significantly older than she is, and their relationship sometimes has a father-daughter element to it. 
Sheba's complaints trouble Barbara, who had considered Sheba to have the perfect family life. Barbara claims she has no intention of reporting her, providing that Sheba ends the illicit relationship immediately. Sheba is relieved to hear this, and she expresses her gratitude to Barbara for keeping the information a secret, and promises to end the affair. But, Sheba is unaware that Barbara is secretly planning to use the affair as a means of manipulating Sheba. Over the Christmas break, Barbara visits her sister, who asks her about another young teacher Barbara befriended. Barbara stiffly says that the young teacher moved away, Barbara's sister asks if she has any other female friends, strongly implying that Barbara is a lesbian, then Barbara insists she has no idea what her sister is talking about. Meanwhile, Sheba is seen at her home attending to some guests when she receives an inappropriate text from Stephen. Later that night, she happens to hear her relative saying something bad to her husband. When Sheba takes out the trash the next morning, she is startled to see Stephen who has come to pay her a visit. He gives her a beautiful pendant as a Christmas gift. Sheba sadly informs Stephen that they have to stop their little affair before things get out of hand, but Stephen leans in and kisses her and Sheba once again gives in to his charm. She goes back home and starts sobbing, feeling guilty about what she's doing. Meanwhile, Barbara is at home, writing in her journal about how similar her life has been to Sheba's. Just then, her roommate, Marjorie walks in to talk about her romantic life, but Barbara is not really in the mood to chat. Over the next few days, Sheba and Stephen frequently have sex in risky places, but they manage to hide their illegal affair from their friends and family. But Barbara eventually suspects they are having an affair, when she sees Sheba talking to the boy. Barbara feels betrayed that Sheba did not confide in her properly about this during the early stages of their friendship, and is angered by Sheba's obsession with Stephen, and her relative neglect of their friendship. One day, Barbara's cat is diagnosed with colon cancer, so she visits Sheba for emotional support and they have a chat. A while later, Barbara holds Sheba's hands and touches her unsuitably, Sheba quickly rejects her advances. Barbara suddenly sees a boy in a hoodie walking into Sheba's garage, then the phone rings and Barbara rushes to answer it, only to find out that the boy in the hoodie is Stephen. Angered by their continuing affair, Barbara storms out of the house with Sheba following behind her. Sheba begs Barbara to forgive her, but this doesn't work because Barbara is more disappointed than anything. She gets into the car and tells Sheba to end her little affair before it's too late, she threatens to tell her husband if she doesn't end the affair right away. After that, Sheba races across the streets in her bicycle to find Stephen. When she finds him, she frantically tells him another teacher just found out about their affair and they need to pretend as if they are no longer together. Stephen gets angry and speaks to Sheba rudely. In the next scene, Barbara narrates her thoughts about being betrayed by her friend Sheba, but she is willing to forgive her because she is the one Barbara has been waiting for all her life. As she says this, a series of scenes unfold showing Barbara and Sheba in their school, rekindling their friendship once again. Barbara narrates how perfect she and Sheba are together. It is clear now that Barbara is obsessed with Sheba and is very much attracted to her. One chilly evening, Barbara and Sheba sit on a public bench and discuss various intimate topics. As they talk, things get weirdly romantic between the two of them. One day, the vet informs Barbara that it is time to euthanize her cat. Barbara goes to meet Sheba crying, expecting her to be there with her when the cat is put down. Sheba is with her family and she consoles Barbara, but says she has to go to her son's play. Barbara then becomes outraged that her friend is choosing to go for a play instead of mourning her cat's death. Soon, Sheba, her husband and Barbara get into a huge argument, which ends up with Barbara threatening to expose Sheba's secret. Sheba has no choice but to leave with her family. That night, a school teacher named Brian visits Barbara. He confesses his infatuation with Sheba, leading Barbara to realize that he is just using her as a means to discover information about Sheba's private life. Overcome by jealousy, Barbara ends up spilling the tea about Sheba's illicit affair. Afterwards, Barbara is racked with guilt and hopes Brian will not report it to the headmaster. Barbara goes to meet Richard and Sheba later and they have a chat. While they are talking, a woman arrives at the house and bangs on the door. It turns out it's Stephen Connolly's mother and she slaps and beats up Sheba violently. Richard and Stephen's dad rush to stop the fight. Later that night, Barbara watches Richard chastise his wife for having illicit affairs with a teenager. Things don't work out, and the next morning there's a scandal at school. 
reporters stormed the school to get the scoop. After the affair becomes public, the head teacher accuses Barbara of knowing about the affair and not notifying the authorities. Both Sheba and Barbara are fired. Sheba's husband asks her to move out of their home, so she moves into Barbara's house, unaware that Barbara is the reason she was found out, she believes the affair became known because Stephen confessed it to his mother. When Sheba discovers Barbara's diary and learns it was Barbara who leaked the story of the affair, she confronts Barbara and strikes her in anger. A row ensues, and Sheba runs outside to a crowd of reporters and photographers. When she becomes hemmed in by them, Barbara rescues her. Sheba's emotion spent, she quietly tells Barbara that she had initiated the friendship with her because she liked her and that they could have been friends. Barbara says, I need more than a friend, then Sheba leaves Barbara, placing the journal on the table, and returns to her husband. Sheba is subsequently sentenced to 10 months in prison. Later, Barbara meets another younger woman who is reading a newspaper about the Sheba Heart Affair. Barbara says she was acquainted with Sheba but says they hardly knew each other. Barbara introduces herself, invites the other woman to a concert, and the pair continue to talk. Now Barbara will be the one to ruin another woman's life yet again. Subscribe to watch more videos like this, turn on notifications and comment your thoughts on this movie.